and then get into the details of the Devi Mahatmya. So, uh, as, we, as we are all followers of the Sanatana Dharma, we consider the Vedas to be our supreme. Vedas which are heard, not written by anyone. Apavarishaya Vedas, we consider the Vedas to be the supreme commandments for our religion and our philosophy. And as we Veda Vyasa, who divided the Vedas into Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda and Adarva Veda, he also is the composer of the 80 Mahapuranas. There is a sloka that helps us to remember the name of the 18 Puranas and that goes something like this. Madhvayam Bhadvayam Chaiva Dhyatrayam Vachatushtayam Anapalinga Kuskani Puranani Vyavakshate. That means Madhvaya. There are two Puranas starting with the letter of Ma, which are the Matsya Purana and the Markandeya Purana. And then Bhadvaya. There are two Puranas again starting with the letter of Bha. Bhagavata Purana and Bhavishya Purana. Then there are three Puranas starting with the word Bhra. Dhrapraya, Brahma, Brahmanda, Brahma Purana, Brahmanda Purana and Brahma Vaivarta Purana. These are the three Puranas starting with the word Bra. Va There are four Puranas starting with the letter Va, which are Vayu Purana, Vamana Purana, Vishnu Purana and Varaha Purana. And then Anapa Lingya Kuskani. A stands for Agni Purana, Na stands for Narada Purana, Pa stands for Atma Purana. Lim stands for Linga Purana, Ga stands for Derada Purana, Ku stands for Kurma Purana, and Ska stands for Skanda Purana. So these are the 18 Mahapuranas, and in addition to these 18 Puranas, Vyasa is also said to have composed Upa Puranas, uh, which, are, which are many in number, again not uh, quantified, and one of the Upa Puranas that Vyasa composed, and Vyasa himself recited to uh, Janame Jaya is the Devi Bhagavad. So Devi Bhagavad is considered as a Upa Purana. And so there are, so these are the 18 Mahapuranas and there are several Upa Puranas. So Devi Mahatmyam or Durga Sattashati or uh, Chandi is part of the Markandeya Purana. So Markandeya Purana as I said in the first line Madhvayam. These are the, one of the two Puranas starting with the letter Ma. Uh, so Markandeya Purana has several, has over 100 chapters and in that 100 chapters the portion between chapters 81 and 93, 13 chapters starting with chapter 81 going to 93 is considered to be Devi Mahatmyam, it's also known as Durga Sattashati or Chandi. So Markandeya, uh, uh, Rishi Markandeya is the Drashtha so, the word Rishi in Sanskrit, uh, people have defined the word Rishi as Rishaya, Mantra Drashtaya, people who have seen the mantras. It is not something that they propose, but they visualize the mantras. So, Vakyamdeya Maharshi is the Drashta for this Purana, and this Purana is narrated by Vakyamdeya Maharshi to his disciple, his name is Kaushtuki. And this Kaushtiki is the son of Gargya Maharshi. So Gargya Maharshi's son Kaushtiki is the disciple of Markandeya. To him, this Markandeya Purana is recited. And this story, in the story, in the Devi Mahatmya portion, we see the actual Devi Mahatmya story is recited to a king by the name Suratha and a Vaishya whose name is Samadhi, Suratha and Samadhi, 
by a by a sage by the name of Sumanthas. So we'll come to that story in a little bit. Little bit. But the the Markandeya Purana is narrated by Markandeya to Kaushtiki. So this this portion is known as Devi Mahatmya and Durga Saptashati. The main reason why it is known as Durga Saptashati is because this contains 700 mantras. So this 13 chapters has in, includes in it 535 slokas or 535 uh, verses. And in this 535, so there are 535 sloka mantras. In addition to it, there are 42 ardha sloka or half sloka mantras, 66 khanda mantras or portion of a sloka mantras, and 57 uvacha or uchu mantras. So rushayaha, rushayaha uchu, that is a mantra, or deva uchu, that is a mantra. So like that, there are 700 total mantras. And because of the number 700, this is known as the Durga Saptashati. And since this Devi Mahatmyam expounds the Mahatmyam of uh, the goddess as Chandi, it is known as Chandi part also in, 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 in India. So, so just like, uh, even though this Devi Mahatmyam is part of our Puranas, so we have the Vedas and then the Puranas and Upa Puranas and Vedangas, etc. Just like the Vedas are considered to be uh, 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 dating back many, many, many generations and, and it is not written by anyone, Durga Saptashati is also considered similar to a Veda. Even though it is part of a Purana, this is considered just like other Veda mantras because the mantras included in Durga Saptashati are as powerful as Veda mantras. So we will see that, you know, the last year, for example, when we did the Maharadram, the main item that we use for chanting is Veda mantras. The uh, Sri Rudra Prasna, which is part of Veda mantras, and for the Durga uh, or uh, Satachandi Homam, we are going to be using the Durga Saptashati. So we consider and we give equal importance to Durga Saptashati just like the Veda mantras in terms of conducting these Yagas and Yajnas. And one of the preeminent uh, Vyakhyanakaras for, uh, for, for uh, Durga Saptashati is Sri Bhaskar Raya. Bhaskar Raya is also very famous for his commentary on Lilita Sahasramama. Sri Bhaskar Raya, uh, Bhaskar Raya in his commentary called uh, Guptavati commentary for Durga Saptashati, he has, he has mentioned that these mantras are Drishta mantras just like the Veda mantras. So Durga Saptashati is considered just like the Vedas. Similarly, another thing to note here is even though this is part of a Purana, just like Veda mantras, these Durga Saptashati has a Rishi, a Chandas, a Devata and Vinayoga associated with it. So when you chant a Veda mantra, you are supposed to start with the Rishi who is the seer of this mantra, the, the Chandas, the Devata and then Vinayoga. Same way, the Durga Saptashati also has the same components to it. So Durga Devi Mahatmya is a great Mantramaya text, there are very many many commentaries on Durga uh, on Saptashati. Uh, about 65 commentaries I believe are available, out of which only about 8 or 10 are available today. And the Bhaskar Raya commentary is, is one of the famous ones of Durga Saptashati. Uh, in, within Durga Saptashati, there are four stotras or stutis that are part of Durga Saptashati. So the way, uh, these four stupis, the first one is the Brahma stupi, which is part of uh, chapter 1. The Brahma stupi uh, starts with Vishvesh Tarin Jagar Dhatri Stiti Samhara Karinim Stavmi Midram Bhagavadim Vishnu Rakula Tejasaha So this is the Brahma stupi, which is in the first chapter of uh, uh, Durga uh, Saptashati. This Dhamma Sutti is also known as Tantrika Ratri Sutta. Tantrika Ratri Sutta, that is in the first chapter. Then in the second, the second Sutti that is included in Durga Saptashati is known as the Shakrari Sutti, which comes at the end of the, uh, uh, before I go there, the Durga Saptashati is divided into three, three sections or three components. One is known as the Prathama Charitram, Madhyama Charitram and the Uttama Charitram. The first chapter is the Prathama Charitra, the second, third and fourth chapters are the Madhyama Charitra and the remaining chapters are called the Uttama Charitra. So in the second, in the end of the second, second uh, or the Madhyama Charitra, 
there is a Shakrādhya Sudhi. So basically that starts by, start by saying, Shakrādhya Sura Gana Mihate Tipitye Tasmin Duryatmani Sujari Balecha Devya Tampushtu Pranati Namra Shiro Naramsa Vabhi Praharsha Ulatogya Macharu Deha. So Shakrādhya Sudhi is the second Sudhi that is uh, in the uh, end of the second chapter. Then the Yadevi Sudhi that is very, uh, very famous in the uh, in the again the, in the Uttama Charitra, which is in the, uh, the fifth chapter, this starts with Namo Devye Mahadevye Shivaye Satatam Namaha Nama Prakritye Bhadraye Niyata Pranatas Matam. So that is known as the Yadevi Stuti or Aparajita Stuti. It is also known as the Tantrika Devi Sutra. And this is the Stuti where we worship the goddess as Yadevi Sarva Bhuveshu Vishnu Maya Vishabhida Namastasti 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 Namo Namaha. Like that, there are many, uh, many stanzas, uh, nine stanzas uh, going in the same pattern. So this is the Yadevi Stuti. And then finally, in the uh, 11th chapter, what is known as the Narayan Stuti, uh, which is uh, uh, Devi Pravarna Tihare Prasida Prasidita Madhav Jagato Hilasya Prasida Vishweshwari Pahi Vishnum Tvameshwari Devi Chara Acharasya So there are four specific stutis as part of Devi Mahatma which are very considered to be very very important. So as I said, I will quickly go through the, the Prathama Charitram, what is, what is covered in the Prathama Charitram, the Madhyama Charitram and the Uttama Charitram. Just uh, I know that many of you are uh, already familiar with all these stories. So for those who are not familiar, I will just quickly give through some explanations about what is included in Devi Mahatma. So the Prathama Charitram, in this Prathama Charitram we worship the Devi as the Adi Shakti or Para Shakti and as Yoga Maya. So here the, the concept is Devi is the central and the key entity for the creation of the universe. And she, she controls the power. So basically the story goes that Mathu and Kaitava are two Asuras who are born from the earwax of Mahavishnu when Mahavishnu himself is in Yoga Vidya. So the Yoga Maya or the, the mother goddess mother has the, has the power to induce the, uh, even Lord Narayana to sleep. And so the Yoga Nidra is in control and at that time Madhu and Kaitava, two Asuras, so the only other living entity at that time is the Chaturmukha Brahma, the four-faced Brahma. And Brahma is, is, is in the, in the Nadhi Kamalam, in the, in the Lotus. And Madhu and Kaitava are the two demons who come out of the uh, earwax and they try to attack Brahma. And Brahma, and that's what Brahma is to be. Brahma uh, prays to uh, the Devi, the Brahma Stuti that we talked about in the, the, the first chapter. And Devi Yoga Maya decides to uh, uh, withdraw from uh, Lord Narayana who is in the, in the influence of Yoga Maya. In the, in the Yoga Nidra, and at that time, Arayana is able to wake up from his uh, yogic Nidra, and then he is, there is a long battle with the uh, with the Madhu and Kaitava, and finally, Devi uh, tricks the Madhu and Kaitava to grant a boon to Mahavishnu, and Mahavishnu asks that they be killed as the boon. So finally Mahavishnu kills them. So this story, is, which is covered in the first chapter of uh, Devi Mahatma, here we worship the uh, Mataji as Mahakali Surupini, because again, the, uh, we talked about the Nidra, Nidra refers to the Tamasic uh, Guna, so we, we worship Devi as the Mahakali Surupini. So one of the points to note here is that from this story it is clear that even for Lord Narayana to do his actions or to be awakened from the Yoga Maya, he needs the help of Devi or Mata. And the same, the same concept is discussed by Shankaracharya when he composed Sondir Lahiri, the very first sloka, where he says, Shiva Shakya Yuttoye Vibhavadi Shakta Prabhavitam 
మహాలక్ష్మి and here we have three chapters of devi mahatmya chapter 2 3 and 4 we cover in the first chapter with the third cha- the second chapter of devi mahatmya mahishasura sainya varun so this is the story of of, of uh, mahishasura mahishasura with his cruelty he is uh, he is controlling the whole uh, asura kingdom and then he went and had a long war with the devas so there was a big devasura yuddha and not only mahishasura won the war he he took over the 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 power of devendra and he didn't stop there he went and grabbed the powers of all the other devas like surya chandra indra agni vayu varuna brahma vishnu mahesh so so he 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 is trying to take all the powers of surya chandra agni vayu varuna and others and at that time again the devas in the leadership of uh, devendra do the this stuti which we again talked about the devas sapta the stuti as a second uh, stuti in devi mahatmya and please with the stuti uh, and, and they, the devas also uh, involve brahma vishnu and maheshwara and from the energy of brahma vishnu and maheshwara the devi is born the tejas the, the, the unification of the tejas of brahma vishnu and maheshwara the devi uh, devi emanates from that and uh, she gets the powers and the uh, and the uh, ayudhas of all the trimurtis and then she engages in a war with mahishasura and his his sena so in the third in the second chapter we have the mahishasura sainya varna followed by mahishasura varna in chapter 3 uh, and then finally the fourth chapter is this tuti that we discussed again the uh, the yadevi tuti or the aparajita tuti is, uh, is i'm sorry the sakara tuti is in the end of the second chapter uh, in the second uh, uh, second episode then we go to the uttama charitra which is the uh, chapters 5 to 13 nine chapters and we worship again goddess as maha saraswati and here in chapter 5 there are uh, again two asuras by the name shambha and nishambha and there are many of their uh, there are many of their uh, lieutenants and generals so Ch- chanda and munda two of the uh, uh, two of the two of the generals of shambha and nishambha they uh, uh, they spot the devi and so again here in the uh, chapter 5 we have the yadevi stuti and the yadevi stuti in chapter 5 is similar to the vibhuti yoga of bhagavad gita so in bhagavad gita where the vibhuti yoga bhagavan describes all the qualities that you see as his own his own uh, his own energy the yadevi stuti is very similar there are some similar constructs in the yadevi stuti so in chapter 5 the, uh, the, the after chanda and munda spot the devi uh, the shambha and the shambha they send a, a, a emissary sugriva and sugriva comes to devi and tells her that he should uh, she should consider marrying shambha and the shambha because they are the greatest people on this world so devi tells the prize back saying that only if somebody meets me in battle then i will marry that person so that is the message that devi sends back to shambha and the shambha then in chapter 6 we have the dhumra lochana vada dhumra lochana is again one of the generals so shambha and the shambha and dhumra lochana to fight with uh, 
uh, Devi and the Dhumralochana Vata is described in chapter 6 and again Dhumralochana comes with 60,000 Asuras and then Devi dis- destroys him with a Kumkara with just a Kum uh, Shabda she described and then the army of the Asura all the 60,000 Asuras and his army is destroyed by Devi's vehicle which is the lion and then in the uh, seventh chapter the, it is described the the battle with Chanda and Munda. So again, uh, Kali, uh, the Devi in the form of Kali, fights with the Chanda and Munda army and then finally severes their head. And so she also got the name Chamunda from that episode. So the name Chamunda is uh, given to Devi. And then in chapter 8, one of the other generals of uh, uh, Shumbha and Shumbha Rekta Bija comes with this entire army of Shumbha and uh, at that time all the gods Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti they all give their uh, identity and their weight and their uh, ayudhas to the Devi so she's, she appears in the form of Brahmi, Maheshwari, Kaumari, Vaishnavi, Varahi, Aindri, Narasanthi etc. and then in this chapter there is also an episode where uh, Shiva is sent as a Dutta to, to Shumbha and hence she gets the name Shiva Dutti. Uh, that's also described in this chapter. So Rekta Vija, who was the one who was fighting with the Devi at this time, he has a peculiar ability by which if anybody spills a drop of his blood, another Rekta Vija of equal power springs up. So Chamunda Devi finally had to open her mouth wide enough that all the blood that is falling from the war with Chaman, uh, Rekta Bija is falling inside her mouth and then by draining him of the blood she kills Rekta Bija and then in, in chapter 9 Nishumbhavadam is described where again Shumbha and Nishumbha they are the two twin Asuras and one of the Asuras Nishumbha is killed and so Devi kills Nishumbha with uh, Shulam and then in chapter 10 the, the main character Shumbha is killed again uh, Devi uh, kills Shumbha with uh, the Shula and all the uh, uh, sh- Shakti forms the Brahmi, Vaishnavi, Varahi etc they all merge with the Devi and then finally she kills Shumbha with the, with the Shula and then of course chapter 11 as we said is the Narayana is to be Devya, Adeva, Pramaha, Surendra, Sendra, Sura, Vandipu, Roga, Mastam, Katya, Ayin, Tushtu, Varishtha, Lavad, Vigasi, Vatrasi, Bhalasi, Rasha. So that's the chapter 11. And then chapter 12 of Devi Mahatmya is the Bhalasruti. And then chapter 13 is the Varapadana. So as I said earlier, the story, initial story goes that King Surata uh, was a ruler of a kingdom and he was a very uh, able and uh, just ruler. He was ruling everybody just like uh, his own children and uh, uh, finally you know again the people uh, you know some enemies come he goes into a battle with the enemies he is defeated in the battle and he comes back home his own people turn against him and then finally they uh, banish him from the kingdom just on his horseback so he has no other possessions he is just banished from the kingdom and he comes to this uh, forest where there is a hermitage of a rishi called Sumethas. So that's where he finds himself. And in the process he meets up with a merchant, a Vaishya, whose name is uh, uh, Samadhi. And he is also again a very, he was doing very well in his business. He was a merchant, he was doing very well. Finally he, you know, his own folks, you know, this steal money from him and he becomes again with no wealth and then finally he is again banished from his house and he also ends up in the uh, forest in the hermitage of Sumedhas. So the story of Devi Mahatmya is that King Surata and the Vaishya Samadhi approach Sumedhas and say even though we did all the things we thought was right we find ourselves in this predicament what should we do? So Sumedhas is describing the story in these 13 chapters to these two gentlemen to say, to show the power of the Devi and also to, to teach them the uh, Sri Vidya or the Devi worship. And so the, basically the Bhalashruti, in the Bhalashruti we see that uh, the, the king asked for 
his again his kingdom back from the devi after uh, after hearing this devi uh, penance the devi for three years and at the end of it devi uh, is uh, appears in front of them and they ask for boons from the devi and the king asks for his kingdom back and his uh, all his his power back which obviously he gets and then the vaishya asks for knowledge and the vaishya gets the gyan so what you can see from this episode is that the devi Worshipping Devi is not just for material wealth, but both material prosperity in this world as well as the prosperity beyond this world in terms of moksha or liberation. There is a famous sloka uh, which says, "Yatrasti bhogo achatatra moksha." So, where is where there is bhoga, where there is enjoyment, where is this pleasure? There is no liberation. Because obviously liberation cannot go hand in hand with bhoga. Similarly, yastra asti moksha lacha tatra bhoga. Where there is moksha, there is typically there is no sensual pleasures or enjoyment in this world possible. But Sri Sundari Ujana Tatparana bhoga cha moksha cha karas pareva. So that means. people who are practicing the sri sundari puja or devi puja for them both the bhoga and moksha are equally attainable just like you have something in the palm of your hands karasthare so the 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 the, the benefits of the these the benefits of the uh, devi puja and the durga saptashati parayana are all well documented and uh, Uh, again, in uh, many many texts within our philosophy, the Rudrayamala, Mani Chikalpa, Meru Tantra, etc., the benefits of uh, Durga Sattvashati is mentioned. And again, Devi grants food to every one of us based on our level. So there are some people who are able to understand and attain the ultimate liberation and the Jnana. For them, Devi grants the ultimate of uh, uh, Jnana. And uh, for those others who are not at that level yet, Devi gives appropriate rules to the people who do the Devi Parayana. Similarly, uh, and, and I'll talk a few minutes about the the Krama Parayana Krama and the method that we'll we'll follow next week here. So whenever Devi Mahatmya Parayana is to be conducted in a Uh, in a religious way, in a proper way, there are certain prerequisites to do that. So there are certain things like the Kavacham Devi, Kavacham Devi, Andalas, Rotram to be chanted, uh, Devi Kilakam, the Navakshari Mantra Jagam, followed by Ratri Sutram, and then Devi Mahatmya Parayam or the Durga Sattvashati Parayam. And after the Parayam is completed, again Navakshari Mantra Jaba, Devi Sutra Jaba, Rehasya Prayam, and Shama Prakrana. So this is the Sequence that will be followed for our uh, Satchandi Homa. What we are going to be doing, the, the, the name Satchandi Homa uh, is basically is Satchandi Parayana Sametha Chandi Homa. So that means we are going to do the Parayana or the chanting of the Devi Mahatmya 100 times, followed by what is known as Dasham Satoma or 10% of the chanting. It is if you if you do 100 times chanting, then we have to do 10 times Homa. So that is the paddhavi, or that's the pattern that we are going to follow for the Satchandi uh, Homa. So how we are going to ac- uh, accomplish this hundred times chanting is by having uh, 16 trees, about 20 additional rupees, about 36 people chanting it at one time. We are going to do the chanting four times, so that will be over hundred times uh, parayana. Then on Sunday we will have the Dasham Shahoma, which is 10 percent of the hundred, which is 10. People doing the homa, so we'll have more than 10 actually. All the 16 priests will be doing the homa on Sunday, along with the other mukhya jivans and the other uh, devotees. So this is the pattern that we are going to follow for the Satyajit Homa. There are many activities that we have uh, planned out for these three days, and uh, we have a schedule of events. Uh, I'll quickly mention that on Friday we are going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning. And in the morning we are going to have uh, many of the homas. We will we'll start at eight o'clock with the Ganapati Puja and the Punya Havachan here in the main temple area. And then there will be homas in the Havan area where we are going to be doing the Ganapati Homa, the Vastu Homa, Navagraha Homa, and also Sri Vidya Homa. Sri Vidya Homa again is a very unique homa uh, that uh, is 
will done any time there is a daily puja involved and so Sri Vidya Home will also be performed on Friday and then Friday evening at 4 o'clock we have a special bhajan by the Detroit uh, Bhajan Group, uh, Kamal Sangam Bhajan Group here at 4 o'clock and then at 5 o'clock we are planning to start the religious activities with uh, Bhagavadi Seva, uh, Devi Navavara Puja and starting at 6.30 in the evening there will be Lalita Sahasranama Archana by the uh, devotees, by the ladies uh, followed by uh, Ashtotara Archana, Prasati Archana etc. And then we are also going to chant the Narayana Sthiti, the chapter 11 of Devi uh, Mahatmyam on Friday evening. And then on Sat, and then followed by Mata on, uh, uh at 9 o'clock. And then on Saturday we are going to start the programs at 7 o'clock with the Venkateshwara Suprabhava. And starting 7.30 the uh, Durga Saptasati Parayanam will start. We expect it will go on till about 3 o'clock with all the four rounds of chanting. And then again at 4 o'clock uh, we will have the uh, Piripuvar singing by the Bhajan Guru. Followed by again uh, 5 to 6 we have a one hour special Veda Parayanam that we are planning with all the priests. And then 6 o'clock onwards the Ashtavadana Seva with various uh, instruments, uh, veena, ve veena, violin, etc. Uh, to be played in front of the Devi and then followed by uh, Ras Garba at 9 o'clock. Sunday morning 7.30 we are going to start the Chandi Homo. Chandi Homo will go until about 10 o'clock and then again starting at uh, 10.30 we have the Kalsha Yatra, the Abhishekam and the various pujas like Suvasani Puja, Dambadi Puja, Kanyaka Puja, Brahmachari Puja, etc. followed by uh, final concluding remarks, Acharya Sambhavana, etc. So the entire detailed program is available in the front. Uh, please take a look and please participate in all of this. Uh, I don't have much time left, about 5 to 10 minutes is available. So I just wanted to quickly mention that even though we went through the story of Devi Mahatmyam uh, as it is, that we can so we can understand what is covered in Devi Mahatmyam, it is important to recognize that there are many, many stories behind the story. So what we are seeing is only at one level of understanding. We are seeing story of the Asuras fighting with the Devi and Devi, uh, Devi vanquishing the evil people and, and, and restoring the Dharma in this universe. That is one simple aspect of it. There is allegorical inner meanings to all these stories. So for example, I'll just, uh, I don't have much time to go through the entire detail, but I'll mention a few key components or key points here. So if you look at the, the three people, the main characters of the story, we hear about Suratha, we hear about Samadhi, and we hear about Sumedhas. So what are these three people representing? Suratha, Suratha, Ratha means chariot. So in, in fact, if you, if you study uh, Bhagavad Gita or some of our Upanishad, in Kathopanishad, in there is a sloka, it says, Atmanam Rathinam Vidhi, Shariram Rathamevatu, so basically, the ratha, the main ratha is an allegorical expression to denote our body. So suratha is the representative of our body, the king suratha. Similarly, the word samadhi, which is the name of uh, the Vaishya. Samadhi means a focused mind. The literal meaning of samadhi is a focused mind. Again, pointing to the fact that Samadhi is representing our mind. And finally the person, the Rishi, who is teaching Suratha and Samadhi, the body and the mind, the actual story of Devi, he is none other than Sumedhas. And Medha means intellect or Buddhi. So basically what this Devi Mahatma story allegorically refers is how the, the Buddhi should be able to control the mind and the body. So essentially the mind is controlled by the indriyas of our body, the jnana indriyas and the karma indriyas. So the jnana indriyas observe the various things and we get attached to the various things that happen around us. And so the body in terms, the mind is controlled by the body and, and if the mind is allowing the indriyas to control it, then it will go in various ways seeking the sexual pleasures of this world. We need a strong intellect or buddhi to tell the mind that the mind should be focused inwards to the real truth and not to stay uh, and to stay away from the sensual pressures of this world. So the story of Devi Saptashati is nothing but we trying to control our mind and the body using the intellect 
that the intellect should be the one controlling the mind, not the other way around. The mind should not be controlling the intellect, but the intellect should be controlling the mind. So, and, and Suratha and Samadhi, the body and the mind, cannot achieve their true purpose or true, their true goals until they meet Sumedhas, the real intellect. So similarly, uh, again, due to lack of time, I'm not going to go into the detail, but if you, if you go back to the very first story, we said that uh, during the time of the Pralaya, there were only three beings. There is Brahma and then Madhu and Kaidaba who come out of the ear wax of Mahavishnu. Everybody else is in Yoga Nidra, including Mahavishnu is in Yoga Nidra. So what that shows is, at the beginning of creation, the Sattva, uh, sattva Rajat, Tamos, the three Gunas are the only ones pervading this universe. Everything else is dormant. So we, we learn in Srimad Bhagavatam and various other Puranas about the creation, about how the creation happened. And, and during the pralaya, during the time of the time of the pralaya, all the three gunas are in equilibrium and they are resting within the paramatma. And when these gunas are tend to come out after losing their equilibrium, that is when the creation process starts. So you can see that there are three gunas. So who are the three people represent these three gunas? The Chaturthuga Brahma, he represents the Sattva guna. Madhu, the one of the Asuras, he, he represents the Tamas, the, the dark, darkness quality. And Kaitabha is the Rajoguna, one who is more action oriented. So that is one way of understanding the, the story of Madhu, Kaitabha and uh, the, the first chapter. Another explanation for Madhu and Kaitabha is that the word Madhu means honey in, in Sanskrit. So Madhu can, uh, so there is Madhu, honey, and Kaidaba, Kaidaba means an insect. Kaidaba can be translated as an insect. So when there is Madhu, when there is honey, there is also honey being involved at the same time. So we go after, we all want to go after the what is we consider to be pleasurable in this world. We want to go after the Madhu without realizing that at the same time, there is also going to be Kaidaba sitting right next to Madhu, which is the honey bee, the insect. We are going to also get this tongue sting from the insect. So, so, if you are not able to understand, if you do not recognize the Parabrahman within ourselves, our result is we are going to be end up in this Madhu Kaitaba cycle, which is representative of the whole Samsara Chakra, where we have happiness and sorrow, intermingling happiness and sorrow. So these are many, some of the allegorical meanings behind it. Similarly, there is a meaning for the Devasara Yudha. Uh, again, the Devasara Yudha stands for the inner battle between the good tendencies and the Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mother, Matsarya is within us. So the Devas representing the good tendencies and the Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Mohas, etc. are representing the Asuras. So, and, and, and it is said in the story that this Devas and Mahayudha lasts for a hundred years. The meaning of the, why is it lasting for a hundred years? Because hundred years is generally considered to be our lifespan. So as long as we live, we have this battle within us where the Kama and Krodha and Lobha and Moha, Mother, Matsadya, they are always trying to fight some of the good, uh, uh, good qualities within us. So the forces of light versus darkness, that is always the inner battle. And, and uh, again, uh, and, and the, it also mentioned in the story that uh, the Mahishasura, after winning over the Devas Ramahayudha, he not only conquered Indra, but he also took ownership over Agni, Vayu and other Devas. And again, what is the meaning of that is Agnirme Vachisritaha Vachudaye. So in Veda says Agni, let Agni stay in my, in my, in my speech. Suryo me chakshu shesritaha, indryo me bale sritaha, vayu me prane sritaha, chandrama me manase sritaha. So like this, we say all these devas are various aspects of our own body. So when Mahishasura takes over the powers of all these devas, what that is showing is our evil qualities controlling not only our mind, but all these indriyas, you know, all these indriyas, jnana indriyas, kama indriyas, manas, all the parts of our body. So similarly, there are many, many, I can go much more into detail, but the time is 
11:45, so I'd like to stop here. So there's many allegorical stories behind all of this, all of the uh, stories within Devi Mahatmya. So Devi Mahatmya again is considered to be a uh, Vedic text, even though it is part of the Purana. Uh, so all of you, uh, please tell your uh, family, friends, uh, relatives, everybody else in this area to come and participate in this yajna and get the blessings of the Devi and uh, make this event a great success. I really want to thank everybody for uh, giving me the chance to speak here for a few minutes and I'll conclude with uh, a Devi, uh, Devi prayer. Sarva Mangala Mangalye Shive Sarvartha Sadike Saranye Prempage Devi Narayam Namostute Thank you Mr. Mahalo. Thank you very much. So again, you know, we have prepared now so that we can explain the last thing that we have learned in this. So I pray.